We all got choice. Life about choice. We can turn this into something very real that has the power to change the world. What does a banker from Brickell, a hacker from Hialeah, and a thug from Little Haiti have in common? Nick gave you laundered drug money to start your company. Your money turns into a digital currency, untaxed, unregulated, and untraceable. You want to know what the only difference between a rich thug and a poor thug is? You really think this thing you got is going to make a difference for our family? You've got a rare gift, Izzy. Don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. This is Miami. Even the good get dirty. There's gonna be people gunning for us. Have you hurt people? Have I what? This is my company, my baby, my code. This is your mess, and I'm gonna clean it up for you. So you're welcome to be on your way. It never leaves you, even after you're square. We're gonna change the world. <laughs> you got supply. And you have the demand. You have the problem, and you have the solution. You have the currency of the future. Welcome, Adam. Hello. Thank you for having me. We were just talking backstage about that intense trailer. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Very, very music, highly musical. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I enjoy it. I think they did a great job with both trailers. Do you think it gives everybody a sort of idea of what they can expect from startup? Because this is definitely yeah. a, uh, a ride. I've seen the first few episodes, yeah. and it's, it's intense. I think so. I mean, I don't know if you concur, but I, I think that if you like the trailer, you'll like the show. Uh, and, it, and the show, like the trailer, I mean, even though it's a very um, heady concept and uh, 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 you could... You could get into it in a number of ways. Uh, it is a it, it also is a very, very, even more so visceral show. It's it's um, energetic and propulsive, and uh, it definitely captures a feeling as well as you know. Again, I mean, it's a very cryptocurrency and global economics are heady uh, intellectual concepts, and we dabble in them, but maybe even more so, we dabble in emotion. Uh, I'm curious how you studied up on your cryptocurrency knowledge because Me that's, too. A, lot, Me that's too. a lot to learn. Bitcoin and... Uh, um, I, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And I, uh, I'm i terrible at it. I'm t I, I don't know nearly as much as I should. I know a little. I would I would put you all to sleep so fast if I, if I tried to tell you what I understand about it. Um, I think the interesting thing, there's many interesting things about it, but I think one of the conceits of, of cryptocurrency that's real interesting is that it doesn't seem to have any central governing authority. Um, for Bitcoin anyways, this mysterious guy invented the code and put it out there, and then um, it's up to the public at large to keep the software current and running, and they all democratically... Uh, you know, kind of decide how it changes and what happens, and, and, and it's a, in some ways a beautiful concept, and there also are inherent flaws in that. Um, in terms of our show, one of the things that uh, the characters keep saying is that, um, in, in the other trailer they said it as well, but um, that we don't have many, a bunch of, a lot of the world doesn't have access to banks, but everyone has, almost everyone and even third world countries have cell phones. And if you have a cell phone, you can have access to, to, to um, you know, you can be able to transfer money and, and uh, have a bank account. So, um, you know, there's a democratizing element to it and there is a altruistic element, at least in theory, to what these guys are trying to do. So tell everyone a little bit about your background. Uh, Put my wallet in my front pocket because it can't sit. <laughs> I'll hold it for you. <laughs> um, tell me about your character, Nick Talman, and where you kind of fit in uh, with the story of the show. Uh, I am a uh, uh, an investment banker. I'm um, and uh, I'm trying to 
get out from under the shadow of my crooked investment banker father who uh, launders drug money and other uh, illegal dealings. So he's dirty, and um, I'm trying to be clean and, and do something positive, but um, that's a short-lived notion. I, I, so I, I take, when I, when, what ends up happening in the pilot is I take his, um, I take his laundered money, he needs me to hold it so he doesn't get killed. I don't want to, but I, I hear about this cryptocurrency and I think it's a great idea and it could do some good, so kind of as a fuck you to him, I, I, um, I invest it and then that quickly becomes a problem. Yeah, and then there's, uh, I guess, an FBI agent who is Martin Freeman, uh, who we all love, uh, is kind of tracking your dad and ends up finding you as well. So I'm sure that's gonna be an interesting chase. Yeah, yeah, Martin Freeman is on all of our tails. He's got his own demons, and um, he is unleashed in this part. He is, um, he's really, really fun to watch in, the, in this role. Uh, certainly unlike anything I've seen him do, and you can tell he's relishing it, and um, maybe more than any actor I've ever worked with, at least in a drama, keeps you on your toes. I mean, he really relishes doing it different. He was very inspiring to me. He, he really relishes doing it different every time and experimenting. And so, you know, you're really awake when you're working with him. Yeah, when I was watching, I was like, Bilbo Baggins, especially with all the sex in the, in the pilot episode. I thought I was watching yeah, Game of Thrones. Hobbit, I was, yeah, I Hobbit was sex. Very into, you know, uh, yeah. the first episode sets up this story and there's, uh, you know, a ton of links between uh, characters. Um, tell me a little bit about Eddie's character as well, um, and then we have an Izzy character who's the hacker. Um, um, yeah, well, uh, what I think is really cool about the show, one of the things I really like about it is it, um, you know, it's a very multicultural cast that comes together in a very organic way, and I think Miami is a great city for that, great centerpiece. Um, and Eddie Gathegi, uh, um plays Ronald Dacey. He's one of the, he's like the vice president of a Haitian gang. Um, but he's a noble, noble warrior, and um, he invests that money. He actually ha was having my dad launder it. When he comes looking for that money and finds out what we did with it, he thinks, I'm kind of into this cryptocurrency. Why don't I just invest and be your muscle? Um, and he's fantastic in it, and his whole, uh, uh, um, his whole gang is just a great bunch of actors and um, very, very interesting and some of the best stuff in it. And then um, Omara Marrero, plays Izzy Morales, and she's a, um, her parents are Cuban immigrants, and she's, um, she's a brilliant, uh, uh, I won't say hacker, but she's a coder, um, and she's the one who, it's her dream, and she developed the code, and um, GenCoin is the, our, you know, uh, fictional cryptocurrency, and she invented uh, uh, this code that, you know, per the show is, I'm sure it'll end up having some glitches, but if you listen to her, it's flawless and beautiful and elegant and all things a great code should be. Yeah. And so how did you stumble across this role? Were you interested in streaming services like Crackle? Um, or were you kind of just looking to get back on TV and do something different? It's funny. I, 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 it just reminded me when I got called and my agent was on the phone with my other agent and they like, you know, they're like, receptionist will patch him in and before they knew I was on my one agent's like why wouldn't he do it <laughs> and I'm like oh and they're like oh yeah we got a part we got a part off it for it um, and um and he's like yeah so okay it's starting it's got Martin Freeman I was like I'll do it it's great it's amazing what else tell me more um um but anyways the way I got it was through the traditional channels I got a phone call and um um kind of came out of the blue I mean my agents were wheeling and dealing behind the scenes trying to get me it, but, uh, but you know, that was all unbeknownst to me. And um, um, it was just a great opportunity from start to finish. It was uh, this thing that landed in my lap and it shot right away and we were gonna go to Puerto Rico. We should film in Puerto Rico, which I love and have worked there before and I knew that'd be a great experience and um, thought the scripts were really fun and really interesting. Maybe fun is the wrong word, but it, you know, interesting and intense and um, different for me. And, uh, and then I think the directing even elevated that. Um, ben Kitai, who's the creator, he wrote and then directs most of the episodes. Um, you know, the directing was as it should be, but it really was a whole other animal that elevated the whole thing. And being in Puerto Rico, you have any beach time? Did you relax at all? I had 
exclusive beach, I mean, almost exclusively beach time. It was amazing. I'd be on the phone with friends back home and, you know, unironically ordering pina coladas while I'm talking to them. And, uh, you know, it was amazing. I mean, it was, it was, it's pretty surreal. It was a dream. I, mean, I highly recommend working on a tropical island. Yeah. <laughs> And I have to say, every role that you kind of take, you have you have some nice houses you live in. The digs in this in this show uh, that you kind of inherit, or you know, your girlfriend's dad buys you this house that overlooks the ocean. And in the OC, you had some nice digs too, a little pool house. Yeah, always, always, mommy and daddy's money though. <laughs> someday you know, except, I'm gonna. Except your daddy house. in this show is nothing like Peter Gallagher. He is he is not Sandy Cohen for sure. No, that's true. Um, um, no, fair enough. But uh, nice houses nonetheless. I was like, we can't sit here and pretend like this isn't Seth Cohen from the OC. So let's give him a round of applause. I'm sure you acknowledge you'd love. it. Acknowledge it. <laughs> you know that's what they were waiting for. Uh, you know, playing a role like that that kind of thrust you into the spotlight. Do you try to find roles that are are different from that, or? I don't. It's not something I'm. You know. Uh, I mean, yes, on one hand. On the other hand, um, just by virtue of being older, and pl it's a happy accident that nothing has, to me, come too close to it. In fact, I would, in some ways, this character doesn't seem like it now, but there were moments filming it or early on where I thought, is it a little close, actually? Is he, you know, I mean, I, there's this dynamic where I am this sort of nervous white guy in the not you know um um in the midst of uh, a water polo team yeah well well violence that I'm unaccustomed to and, and on one hand I thought well I'm I'm falling I hope I don't want to fall back on too much like shtick I've done before but a I tried to be very unsticky in this as as possible as <laughs> much as possible I tried to not ham it up or go for a joke too much and then also. Um, the tone is so different. The stakes are so heavy that it just naturally took care of itself. And, and even the filming style is so different that um, I didn't have to worry about it. But, but funny you should ask because in a weird way, this, this, I had my concerns, but they were unfounded. Yeah. I saw a little bit of a, a Seth Cohen thing only because, uh, you know, his, his personality, I guess. But then the fact that this guy who's just living life, normal life, runs into this crisis that kind of changes the whole way his, you know, lifestyle pans out. Um, so tell me about approaching Nick Talman as a character and what you kind of wanted to bring to it, uh, you know, when you read it on the page, how you wanted to bring him to life. Yeah. Well, as I said, I, I, you know, one major thing was I didn't want to, you know, I thought this is a very grounded show and I just, just you know, I, I, I love going for a laugh, but don't, don't. <laughs> And um, if they come naturally, fine, but just, just don't. And then, um, uh, uh, you know, it's funny, but we shot these, um, I'm sort of, maybe I'm telling too much, could, but it, the, it's a happy ending. I think it came out really, really well. Um, and like I said, if you like the trailer, the trailer appeals to you, I think you'll be happy. But that said, um, we shot 10 out of order that were, you know, we shot them out of order and they were, being written in the middle of that filming them. So, so it was a lot of, it was a bit chaotic and it was a lot of on the job, as it always is. But, um, you know, it was a lot of on the job to figuring out what his um, psychology was and, and, and who he is. And um, I have mixed emotions about him personally. I, I think, um, you know, he's a lot of talk. I mean, you know, I, I think he's a bit of a hypocrite, but, but um, that doesn't mean that, but maybe that's interesting. You know, that, that doesn't mean that he's not an interesting character. Um, but he is, he does profess to be a, a self-proclaimed do-gooder, and um, I see scant evidence of it. But, uh, uh, like I said, that, you know, some self-delusion is, um, you know, makes for flawed and interesting characters. Yeah. Do you, can you name a few shows that you think if people are into that kind of show, they'd totally be into startup? Uh, Big Bang Theory. Uh, the, uh, what's the, no. Uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, good question. Um, well, I'll tell you, on one hand, 
what's really, I think, really neat about it is I do think it has a feel uniquely its own. I cannot name, I mean, obviously, I would say Mr. Robot. If I had to just pick one, Mr. Robot, that's a thrilling, dramatic, uh, uh, tech-savvy show. Um, but this is very much its own beast, and I know that, um, and a lot of that comes from the directing style, quite, honest, quite honestly. I know that um, Ben really, really likes and uh, City of God and Amoris Peros and, and um, 21 Grams, and he likes a lot of the uh, uh, South American filmmakers. And so it's got a real indie feel that I think is, um, like I said, I think it's pr pretty unique. But um, um, but yeah, if I, if I had to say one, I guess Mr. Robot is the clear is the clear closest relative. But yeah, I think it's its own, it's its own beast, which is great. I know I got a little like a uh, Dexter Miami feel, maybe a little wire in there. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, I think the wire. Well, that's funny. I think the wire definitely. I could see that. Um, yeah, I mean that's the other thing. It's a lot of different worlds that converge, but also um, maintain their you know identity. So so you have a lot of shows in there in a way. How is it different for you filming you know a network show like The OC or? you know, you're on the league, to filming a streaming uh, series uh, like this. How is the experience different? Um, you know, I mean, in terms of the league and this, none in the sense of, I mean, the one thing about something like the OC or anything on network where you're filming 20 plus episodes a season, it's just schedule. I mean, and I think, I think it hems you in creatively too. If you've got to make so many, you just have to go, you have, you know, you must be formulaic. I mean, every show has to have some formula. A story has a formula. But if you're doing 25 a year, you have to fall back on formula in a way that you don't have to as much if you're doing 10 or even 16. So I think the creative freedom and the, um, and, and, and the fact that you can avoid burnout in a shorter season is and yet still do plenty of story and it still feels like a long time and you really dig into it and you get to know the characters and hopefully do more and I think that's sort of best for all the creative people involved. I think everyone prefers that. Um, in terms of streaming versus not unnoticeable when you're an actor, I mean, no difference. Some of the episodes are released all at once instead of one I mean, one. that's just changing it, yeah, every yeah. day, but it. But yeah, it certainly doesn't make a difference when you're when you're on set. Is this a show we'll be able to binge watch, or is it going to slowly release? Oh, you can binge. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a binge watcher yourself? You know, uh, not not really. And I, I um um occasionally, uh, but. I'm, if, if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm, I'm getting, I'm starting, I'm, 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 um, I love the idea of it, don't get me wrong, I love the idea, I love the idea of just, like, tuning out for two days and doing, you know, um, um, it, it's great to be that immersed in something, um, but I don't know, I, uh, well, you're a little busy, you know, you're a dad, uh, when do you have time it's to no, sort of fatherhood is no own? excuse, you need to binge. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, but I'm on uh, episode three of Game of Thrones, so, yeah. so, uh, <laughs> of the first yeah, season? oh man, are you liking I'm it? I'm late, I do, you know, it took me forever, and I would always drop into a scene and be like, I like the idea, but I don't know what they're talking about, and I don't know, <laughs> and three in, I'm like, I get it, this is really cool, so I'm, I'm excited, the, 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 the last thing I truly binged, and it was just because it was short, so I could, was that O.J. Simpson documentary, which is like my favorite thing ever. Um, that was... Binge-worthy. Binge-worthy. I, other than that, it feels like binging is a little work to me. I gotta be honest. I love Breaking Bad, binge that, and still I was like, this is, let's do another. You know, and, and um, same with uh, the Twin Peaks. That was great too, but, it, but, but that O.J. was the only thing that actually I've binged that just felt like candy, that I was like never bored for a second, and yeah. you know. Do you feel that you have any new O.C. fans that are currently binging your series? Um, I think it went, didn't it, did it just go to Netflix? Did it not, or Hulu, or Hulu? Was, uh, yeah, yeah, so, pro, you know. Like, you'll know. When it yeah, 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 like, yeah, Seth yeah, Cohen. yeah. Um, you probably, but, but I, I can't say there's been an, a, a, a different, you know. 
I can't say I'm, I've noticed. Yeah. Well, you haven't aged today, if I'm going to be honest, sitting right next to you. Thank you. It's all the, it's all the surgeries. This is like my little teenage, like, oh my God, I'm sitting with Seth Cohen. How, yeah, are you, yeah, I won't, we that won't get like into my, ages, but I was, was going to say. That was my thing. Hey, it was like the OC, yeah. what was that, One yeah. Tree Hill yeah, yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. I'm, see, I'm older. I'm, I'm, that's how I would feel if I was sitting next to Jason Priestley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're not, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, so you've done TV, of course. You do movies. How do you go about about picking? Oh, I'm gonna, you know, shoot for a TV show, or I'm interested in a movie, or I'm just gonna take a break altogether. You know, I, I um, um, the breaks come plenty, whether you like them or not. So I don't have to worry about taking a break. Um, um, some people are more fortunate, but um, I there's. There's not that much rhyme or reason to it, to be quite honest. I kind of, you wait, and then you get a call, and you go, that sounds nice. I would like I would like to do that. And then you don't get a call for a while, or you get a call, but they're just, you know, they're not reaching that that bar creatively or otherwise. And, um, um, yeah, they're, they're, you know, I mean, really, it's like, I like to work. I enjoy my job, and I don't doesn't make much difference to me, uh, the format exactly. So... When something um, you know that 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 meets the standard comes along, I'm, I I readily accept. Yeah, and uh, I heard you're going to be in the new Chips movie that's coming out next year. Yeah, uh, directed by Dax Shepard. Yes. Uh, are you guys done with that? How did that go? Yeah, that was a thrill. That was really really fun. Um, I think uh, I think everyone will be. I won't say pleasantly surprised because maybe you just expect it to be great. But I think Dax. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I gotta say, I was like, you know, I'm, 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 Chips is a little pre my generation, um, but I still, you know, I mean, I think it's plenty cool idea to remake it, um, but I don't have that natural love for it, and, but I don't know, I didn't expect it to be totally inspired, but I thought when I read Dax wrote the script, and I just thought, he did such a great job. It's so funny on the page, which is somewhat rare for studio comedies. I feel like half the time, it's just a very rough draft, and they go, Will Ferrell will make it funny. They'll just make it funny. <laughs> um, and, and um, I mean, really, I feel like, I mean, we can go into side project or, or conversation, but, like, television, actually, I think, page for page is funnier because you've got... A whole writers' room punching it up, and you know, I've got a it's 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 a, a smooth operation. And studio comedies are written by two guys, you know, and then a room, and then again, they're just like, you guys go make it funny. And um, anyways, so I was so surprised to see that it was a really funny um, already. I was like, you don't have to improv; it's pretty funny. And then B, um, you know, he loves he loves his cars and he loves his motorcycles and his gear machine. So it wasn't perfunctory action sequences. It was, I was like, oh, of course, right. He wrote, directed another movie, somewhat about, ra you know, um, um, cars. And, and uh, you know, so I was like, oh, he's the perfect guy to bring these two things together and take the action very seriously. And um, so I guess what I'm, I mean, I won't call it grounded really, but still more grounded than I expected. And, um, and uh, that was kind of a pleasant surprise. It's really exciting. We're excited for that. And we're excited for startup, which is, uh, I heard we're currently streaming also on Sony PlayStation, um, and that's where apparently you can watch the first two episodes of Startup, right? Correct? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just watch it on the 6th. It comes out. Just watch it all. Yeah. <laughs> watch it all. Well, well, can we expect uh, a season two? Does the first season allow for a season two, or are you not going to give us a point? Um, no, everyone's dead, and... Uh, <laughs> You know? <laughs> I mean, they can do it. No, I, uh, yeah, I mean, listen, uh, we would all very much like to do more, and it certainly sets it up to do, to do more. I mean, I think it, it would not be a fitting ending. I mean, you, we could not do more in some shows. Uh, I did, a, I did a, just one season of a show a couple years ago called Billy and Billy, and that ended on a, just after one season, and it was sort of kind of very fitting and was a ni nice, neat package in one season. This would not be that. This is definitely designed... Yeah to continue the story. Let's hope it does, because I hate when freaking shows end and you're like, I don't know what's going to happen yeah. now. My life is over. At least I am, guys. Come on, get in with me. Uh, it's audience Q&A time, so get ready for some questions. Uh, okay. Here we go. Hey, I'm a huge fan. I can't wait to watch this. So I was Thanks. wondering if um, what you learned filming, does it change how you think about the internet at all? Like, do you tape your webcam or you think like cars could be hacked or like any like things like that? <laughs> 
Hmm. <laughs> Great question. Uh, I do, well, yes. I mean, I do, my ears like prick up when I hear Bitcoin and, you know, I listened to a podcast about it the other day just because, you know, I, um, so my attention is, is placed on it more. Um, in terms of my feeling about it all, to me, technology is the most relevant question. You know, it's, it's, um, it's just the most relevant question about anything right now. And I think it's, we're living in the most fascinating time and it's terrifying and it's exciting. And I try not to, it's so, it's so terrifying and amazing how fast technology, how, how much we've seen and how much we're gonna see and it just keeps speeding up. And it's very unknown and it's the, sp it's, 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 like I said, it fascinates me and I try not to put too much of a, I think we all have a tendency to view the time we grew up in as the most harmonious time between humanity and, and technology and nature. And I try to go, hey, maybe even in 50 years we'll all be living in pods and, you know, it'll be like, and and you know I mean I, there's one episode of Black Mirror I did I did I did binge that and um, and um, where they're living in these little like they're almost living in an iPhone and on one hand I'm like I could see that that seems like a you know maybe generations away but that seems plausible and at the same time maybe it's no less beautiful I you know I don't know I, I don't know it's obviously it seems terrifying but I know this is a far-reaching answer but. Um, I know it seems terrifying, but like I said, I just try to sit back and enjoy the ride and, and, and know that there is no, no one generation has a monopoly on the best. So, you know, you've really, thank you for this question. I'm just, but everyone, you know, everyone, there's the constant debate of the phone. What's too much with, you know, uh, um, how much is too much with the phone? And I think obviously you, it's healthy to look around at the world around you, but again, it's like there's a whole generation of people doing this, and who can say if that's definitively bad or that's just leading to us merging with technology and, you know, um, anyways. Are we becoming robots? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, that's exa that, that is exactly what I'm saying, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Yeah. Robots, Nanobots. Robots Nanobots. living in uh, tiny houses. That's the future, guys. Nanobots. We are all becoming cyborgs. <laughs> Who's next? Hi, Anna. Thank you for being here. So what a type of advice would you give to the young generation that thinks that uh, the acting and film directing is easy? What, 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 what advice? advice would I give to the young generation that thinks acting and film directing is, is easy? Uh, I think that is, yeah. <laughs> You're like, it's a piece of cake. Yeah, um, well, that thinks it's easy. I mean, I mean, um, I don't know. I mean, I think I think like some things. It it. Let me say this: acting is a great life. I'm very happy, and I have a. I, I I've been very fortunate, and it's a wonderful job. And there are trade offs to be sure, but no complaints uh, overall. So in some ways, it is easy. It's a fan, it's a fantastic job to have. I highly recommend it. Um, 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 directing and writing, I think, is probably a little. It's not harder. I mean, I think they're probably equally as hard to do on the highest level, but I do think you have to self-generate more. If you're a writer, I mean, I, I, I'm really um, in awe of writers who have to go then into it. They have to, they finish, they write and direct a movie or just write it and they go, okay, that's done. I gotta do my next thing. I gotta go in a room and stare at a blank screen and manifest this entire thing and, and also Hope that no one else d writes that and makes that idea in the in the midst of me working on it for a year, um, and then it and then it I can see it to completion. I mean that that perseverance and belief is incredible. I do think acting there's like a little more of a clear channel, and um, like I said, you don't have to, you know, you you yeah, you have to build it from the ground up much less. Um, but in terms of it being easy. Um, I think to do it poorly is easy, and to do it hard is, uh, or do it well is hard, and, um, but then again, some people are more gifted than others, and for some, it probably is easy, and uh, I don't know. But advice? <laughs> uh, 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 my only advice is I think that, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I am from an older generation where I didn't have to make my own stuff, because now there's almost no, ex you know, now there's no excuse, it's like, 
well, go film. If you need a stuff for your reel, go write and direct something on your phone and, and make it, you know? And or you want to make a movie, go make it on your phone. Go do it, you know? <laughs> and and um, in some ways, it's the most democratizing thing ever. And it's, it's great. And it will lead to, it'll harvest the best talent from not just the privileged people who live in certain cities, but everywhere. It's going to be amazing. And so many voices. I mean, we're all lucky for it. Um, 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 so I think, my, I guess my advice is the technology is out there, so now, now you, can, you, can, you can start making it yourself. I mean, like I said, I say that as someone who broke in earlier and didn't have to do that. <laughs> oh, you don't make movies on your cell phone? No, and I don't think I'd be very good at it, but, uh, but I'm in awe of people who can. You were saying there's some pros and cons with your job. Um, do you find that, you know, when you were at the height of the OC and the fame was overwhelming, do you think fame has sort of changed and that culture has changed a bit? Or do you think I it's... Do, I do. I mean, I can't say if the culture as a whole has changed. Um, um, or I can say, but I won't tell you. Um, but I do think... Um, I do think... F that show came out in 2003, and that was... like In terms of how fast technology is moving, I mean... Or maybe not. That's a long time ago now, but still... Um, you know, no Twitter, no TMZ. Like it, it was just a different. I think that would be so different now to be on something like that. Um, you would be so, so much more bombard, bombarded, so much more, um, um, and have so much less privacy. I still feel like I had a fair amount of privacy. Um, so you know, on one hand, I don't envy uh, people in that situation, really. But then again. You know, good. It's still a good problem to have. I mean, you know, I it's it's one of those things where like, I'm torn because on one hand, you think, oh, paparazzi, they shouldn't be allowed to bother these people, and myself included, but not nearly as much as some others. But um, but at the same time, you think, but cry me a river, and you know, like <laughs> of all of all, you know, I mean, we all should be so lucky, and like I said, and and. Uh, I get it. I can't expect anyone else to care. It's a little easier now because with Instagram and stuff, you guys can just post the pictures you want people to see and maybe people won't haunt you as much. That's true, but on the flip side, I think there's probably more paparazzi because there's more places to disseminate the photos. You know, Earlier it was like, well, if people or Us Weekly is not going to buy it, there's no market. And now it's like some, someone will give you 50 bucks. Well, if you want to see Adam, don't look at his paparazzi photos, but watch don't the startup, look at guys. <laughs> September 6th. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you very much. This is very fun. Thank you.